Ohio. Today we are going to learn how to fold origami cranes. Now origami cranes are very well known for being a Japanese craft, which is why I started this video out by saying Ohio. Ohio is one of the ways Japanese people say hello. It means good morning whereas they also say hello by saying konnichiwa or konwana. Konnichiwa means good day and is used during the middle of the day and the afternoon whereas konwana is used at night time. Now I think they are very fun words which is why I made sure to memorise them. So today we are going to do some origami. Now origami is a very old and very fun way of folding paper to look like something else. Now I personally love doing origami and I did it when I was very little and the name origami literally means folding paper because in Japanese ori means folding and paper is how you say kami which funny enough also means gods. Now I think this is a really fun thing to do so I'm going to tell you a little bit of the history of origami and one of my favourite stories to do with it and then I'm going to show you exactly how to fold your very own origami crane. Now origami cranes are one of the easier things to make with folding paper and I'm sure you've all seen pictures of these amazing things that have been folded from a single piece of paper. Now origami first is first known to have come from China and this was such a long time ago that we don't even know when it first originated because it happened so long ago that there's no way for us to know for certain but we are pretty sure that origami showed up in Japan in the 16th century and we believe this because that's when paper first started showing up in Japan so we know that it is so many thousands of years old. Now very similar things have also shown up in other countries for example a very similar method of folding paper showed up in Spain called pap papyroflexia or pajarita which both means pa reflexive paper or small pajarita, I'm not sure of that one, small pages I think but I think you might need to look that one up for me. Now my favourite story to do with a foul to do with origami cranes is the story of a thousand cranes and this is well known all over the world but it's a very big part of Jam Japanese culture. Now a thousand cranes is maybe less of a story and more of a folk tale because it is believed in Japan that if you fold one thousand paper origami cranes you get one wish. Now there are some that believe that it's not just a wish you get, it's good health and good luck. But either way it's believed that something good will happen. So this is believed because cranes are a very auspicious or very important animal in Japan. They're considered honourable and pretty amazing. And it is believed that they live for 1,000 years, or at least this was believed quite a while back. Now, because a thousand cranes is a lot, there are so many cranes when you have a thousand, they are often strung on one piece of string so they take up less room and then they're strung from the ceiling. So you'll just have loads and loads of cranes coming down on a piece of string. Now, these because 1,000 is so very, very many, 
it is often done as a group activity. So not just one person making the 1,000 cranes, it will be lots of people and it will be a social activity that they do together and they will all decide on a wish beforehand. Often it will be something like good luck or health or passing an exam, but they will all do it together. So it could be 10 people and they each do 100 cranes each and then they'll have the thousand at the end or it could be I don't know 20 people and they all do 50 cranes to get to the 1000 at the end but they all do it together as a group activity which I think is really fun now one of the sad things about this particular story is that it became much more well known after a very very sick little girl decided she wanted to fold 1000 paper cranes and wish for her own good health and unfortunately she only did 644 but her family and her friends they all got together and they honoured her by finishing all the cranes she couldn't so she had 1000 which I think is a very sweet story even if it is still a little sad now I'm going to show you exactly how we need to fold our paper to make a paper crane. So the first thing you need to make sure you have is paper. And you might have the special origami paper, which is a square, but you might not, which means you need to make sure that you have a pair of scissors so you can cut it into the correct shape. So I'm going to pause here and you can pause as well so you can go and find these items or you can ask your adult where they are and then I'm going to come back and I'll show you step by step how to make your own origami Hi everyone paper. so hopefully you have your paper and your scissors now this can be done without scissors but I think it might be easier for you with so what we need to do is make a square piece of paper because origami paper is very different it's usually a square that is then foldable now I have these very small pieces which are really really nice but I think it might be a little difficult to do an origami crane when the pieces are quite so small I think I would need practice before I could do it with that sort of size but this is the shape we need unfortunately it is too little but the shape is correct we need a square and this one is a rectangle so what we're going to do is we're going to make it into a square and to do that we're going to fold it into a triangle until the bottom bit of the rectangle hits the side of the rectangle so the lines are all the same and then we're going to just go down and fold it we're going to press down on paper so we've got one triangle with a bit of rectangle on the top and then we're going to turn it over so it's a very strange looking rectangle and triangle and we're going to fold the rectangle at the very edge so when you turn it over you can't see it and we're going to make sure to fold it very very well and then we're going to cut it off now you can also rip that bit off but it takes a lot more care so you have to be a lot more careful when you do that so I'm just going to do it with my scissors this time and then at the end when you unfold it you have two triangles or a square so now we're going to make our origami crane because we have the correct piece of paper now so what we're going to do is we're going to 
fold it back over so we have our triangle again and then when we open it up we're going to fold it the other way so we have yet again a triangle but you can see the line and we're going to make sure we're really really careful so then we're going to unfold it so as you can see there are four different triangles that you can see in the square and we're going to be careful and turn our square into a rectangle so we're going to do this and we're going to make sure all the edges are aligned so we're going to be really really careful so now we've got rectangle with different triangles in it so after we have a very interesting looking rectangle we are going to open it up and we're going to turn it over and do another rectangle so we've now got another rectangle and now when you look at it you can see four triangles or two squares although I do wonder how many different triangles you can make out of this because you could have one two three four or five I wonder if anyone could find any more but I'm not sure so now you've got your rectangles and when you open it up you can see all these different triangles inside and that's very important so now what you're going to do is you're going to do move it so it's this way and you're going to fold it back into a triangle and now you're going to open it up and this part is going to be quite complicated but you've done all the work so you're going to so you've got it open like this and what you're going to do is you're going to fold from this corner down so one triangle touches the other see and then you're going to fold it just there again and then you're going to push this bit down so you have a square and a triangle and then when you open it up it will look like that now this part is a bit tricky as I said so you may need to try it a couple of times so after that you're going to take this piece on the other side and you're going to do what you just did and fold it inwards and then fold this bit outwards so you have one square or two triangles and when you look inside it looks like that Okay, you might need to try that bit a couple of times because I had trouble getting that bit correctly done. So you've got to make sure all your lines are well done. Okay, so next part is also going to be a little bit difficult and what you're going to do is you're going to fold, looks like that, and you're going to fold this bit until that line meets the middle line so you now have that very interesting looking triangle and you're going to do the same on the other side and hopefully they'll meet at the same height now mine are a little bit different but I think it's okay because it's only slight so now we've got the two triangles here and then we've got one big triangle at the very top 
And what we're going to do is we're going to turn this over and we're going to do the same on this side. So it meets in the middle and we're going to do it on this bit as well. So now on both sides it looks a little bit like an ice cream cone to me. So you've got just there. And you've got three triangles on either side and when you look at it like that it looks like that now what you're gonna do is you're going to open it up all over again so they touch so they're no longer closed up like an ice cream cone and what you're gonna do is you're going to take it like this and you're going to be really really careful because this is quite difficult to do you're going to so you're going to then take this and move it up and you're also going to be carefully moving inside so that you can almost fold it inside into another triangle and you're going to keep doing this very carefully very carefully because look how strange it will end up going until it turns into an almost diamond shape and you're just going to carefully as I've said make sure that it can lay flat so you're going to use your fingers to do this you're going to rub it down and lay it flat so you get your diamond shape now as you can see it doesn't need to be perfect because my one definitely isn't so what you now do as you can see it looks a little strange but you have inside so you're going to turn it around and you're going to do the exact same thing you just did really carefully you can do it so you're just going to make sure to fold it so inside yet again you're making another diamond and you're going to yes just rub along the lines so it lays flat and it should lay pretty much the same as it did behind and you can see that when you've take a flap down you have your triangle and then behind it you have the other side so you've now got your different diamond sides now after this after you've made sure all the lines have been pressed down properly and carefully just like that you'll see that you can do this a little bit like legs at the bottom so what you're going to do is you're going to fold it just like this hmm oh I think I did it on the wrong bit hmm what did I do wrong here ah I know I needed to open it up first so first of all no I did that correctly so yep we're going to fold just along here and I did do it correctly I was just getting confused and I'm sure you get confused too but what we did is we folded the edges inwards and we're going to do it the same on the other side because that's what we do on this it seems to be done twice 
on both sides. It always seems that you have to copy it. So we have legs again. And then this time we're going to open it up. And we're going to make sure yet again that it lays flat. So we're going to very carefully make sure to press down on the paper so that it will be as flat as it can. And then we are going to fold the very end up. So it will now go like that. And that looks a bit like a house to me. So we're going to fold up on both sides just like that, as you can see. And then we need to open it up on both of these bits. So yet again, we're going to open it the other way. So we now look a bit like this instead. And then we're going to take it and we're going to bend it down as far as it will go like that. So we now have a triangle and another triangle and we're going to turn around and do it again on the other side. As far down as it will go, and we'll bend it and then press it down properly. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take these two bits and we're going to slightly and carefully pull them down a little bit, just like that. And we're going to press as we do it to keep them in that way. And then we're going to look at these two bits and we're going to just bend it and twirl it so it looks a bit like a beak. Mine's a very unusual beak but it is a beak. And then I'm going to leave my tail nice and pointy because I like that in a crane. So it looks a lot like a crane now and then all we need to do is push the wings up. So we now have one crane. Now I found that quite complicated and I did need to try and practice doing it quite a few times before I got it correct. So I think you might need to do similar and try it a couple of different times before you get a good one. And even then you'll need to practice. So as you saw, I made a couple of mistakes and I kept going. So I think you can do the exact same thing. And who knows, maybe you'll make 1,000 cranes and make your own wish. Ooh, I quite like mine.